Now, activists in Sudan say at least 27 people have been killed after security forces launched an assault on a camp at the centre of the country's protest movement in Khartoum, sending activists running for cover to escape gunfire. Other sit-in protests around the country were also attacked in what appeared to be a coordinated push to crush the opposition movement, which has been calling on Sudan's military rulers to hand over power to civilian rule. A warning, Yusra el Bagir's report contains images you may find distressing. They went in at first light. And with that, the Khartoum sit-in, a center of pro-democracy protests for the last two months, was engulfed in a hail of gunfire. This is the crackdown many have feared they have been building up to. An uneasy truce has been largely held between the military and protesters since the overthrow of President Omar al-Bashir in April. Talks to establish a transitional government have been ongoing, but this morning, the talking stopped. Live ammunition was used to disperse the demonstrators. Most was reportedly fired into the air, but witnesses say many were killed and hundreds more were injured. At Al Mu'allim Hospital on the sit-in site, patients were treated out in the lobby. A doctor told Channel 4 News they don't have enough beds to treat the overwhelming number of injured people. The attack seems to have been led by the rapid support forces. A paramilitary wing formed out of the notorious Janjaweed militia. Their leader is vice chair of the ruling military council. There have been sporadic threats and attempts at dispersal before, with the RSF claiming the area had become too dangerous to leave unchecked. We believe that the site of the sit-in has become a hub for all kinds of criminal acts, has become an unsafe place for revolutionaries and is a threat to national security. Therefore, we, in coordination with other security forces, will carry out legal procedures to stop these violations. This was the scene just over a week ago. Far from being an unsafe space, thousands of demonstrators felt comfortable enough to gather here every day to call for democracy in a country which has seen nothing like it for three decades. Months of peaceful protests which led to the removal of a dictator. Today, it's the demonstrators who've been removed, at least for now. The military claim they didn't disperse the sit-in by force. They say the tents are still there and the youth are moving there freely. Protesters have told us that is not true. We hold the security forces responsible. They have betrayed us. People have been killed. Sit-ins all over the country have been dispersed, but not everybody has retreated. Makeshift barricades are being built for confrontation with the patrolling security forces. A nationwide strike has been called. The Khartoum sit-in was the heart of the revolution. Today, it was ripped out, but there are still flickering signs of life. And Yusra is with me in the studio. Did people see this coming? They have seen this coming and tensions have been building over the last month and this wasn't the first attack, this is the fourth. But the scale of the brutality was been, has been shocking to everyone. At the same time, people have you know, been at the sit-in for the last two months, three months, and they did not expect that they would be dispersed so violently. And so what does this mean for getting to a transitional government? I mean, I just spoke to a leading figure from the opposition coalition, Dr. Modo Ibrahim, who said that negotiations have completely stopped and there's no solution except a com complete dissolving of this transitional military council and a civilian government to form. There's no turning back, apparently. Yusra, thank you very much.